I don't know why I keep dreaming about her. Dreams pass in time. I'd much rather dream about Padme. Just being around her again is intoxicating. Be mindful of your thoughts, Anakin. They betray you. I thought you said the dialogue in this movie didn't work. Look at this. The chemistry. The dialogue. The connection. There's so much going on here. This is what there is in episodes one through three. This is how important it is for the title calls to actually give you a decent amount of information unlike a certain trilogy out there somewhere. The Separatists are making it difficult for the Jedi to maintain peace as the movement is being led by mysterious Count Dooku. Good information. I actually know what the fuck is going on here. That's the problem with these new shits. You don't know shit even with the title crawl. See, they want to create an army even before the clones show up. So idiots out here talking shit about how the Jedi do military shit are full of shit. They need help. That's why they're doing it. And that was before the clone army. Didn't have that in KOTOR as well. And that took place thousands of years prior and this was made around the same time and people still talk shit in the very beginning shit's already getting heated that was quick an assassination attempt damn good thing it was a double a lot of people complain that these scenes don't have enough emotion when someone dies but in old serials which is what Star Wars is based on they don't stay and have too much emotion over death they move forward the original trilogy was like this too Look at Luke after his parents died. So why talk shit here, but not towards the original trilogy, which did the exact same thing? I thought they said the acting was really bad. Her reaction to the double dying was really good. Again, fuck off. See, this is important. They always get on this, but you need to hear what's going on politically to have a better understanding of what's going on in the overall war. Without this... You're left out of the loop and dark and you're left in the dark about the political turmoil that ensues when there's war. It adds to the story and people complain. But when Rogue One spent over 20 to damn near 30 minutes of plot exposition, they said nothing. Get the fuck out of here. So they have some pretty charming chemistry. And in the midst of this, they have one, I repeat, one moment of expositional dialogue to add to the chemistry. One people blew this out of proportion for over a decade. Again, calm down. Obi-Wan got more of his emotions. That's cool. It's rare to see such things. Again, they are not emotionless. They just have self-control. There's differences, idiots. Their dialogue and chemistry is really good. So many great moments where Anakin and Obi-Wan have some incredible dialogue. That doesn't even get recognized. Their chemistry is very unique. I love how Obi-Wan shook his head in remembrance. That was good. Nice subtle acting. Jar Jar is more mature now. It's great to see him like this. He developed and changed and people complained. He was only like that in one film. The other two, he matures. And they still talk that shit. At least he developed as a character. What are they talking about? It's like we're watching completely different movies. They say these movies have no personality. Anakin got friend zoned. What do you mean? This is some intense dialogue. This is good. The senator is in danger. The Jedi have come to protect her. It's getting really heated. She says she doesn't need more security. She needs answers. Right. She needs investigators. But Jedi are not investigators. They're keepers of the peace. However, they do take action when necessary. So everything is not always perfect. This leaves room for flexibility. The Jedi were there to stop them during the blockade, not investigate. Here the same applies. Here to protect Padme, not investigate. However, she's right. She's going to need some investigation. Obi-Wan's getting on Anakin. Interesting. So their relationship's not perfect. I thought you said nothing went into the writing. Even Roger Ebert got on this film. You've got to be kidding me. All that in their dynamic and you still talk that shit? Again, fuck off. Anakin is trying to impress Padme. However, he gets humbled. Personality flaws, character dynamics, a lot of great material, Lucas. Now it's getting heated. You will pay attention to my lead. Why? What? 
Damn, this is some serious personality flaws. Very good use. How badass. The bounty hunters are really, really cool. However, Anakin and Obi-Wan are watching out for Padme. Padme shuts off the cameras, putting her in danger. She programmed R2 in case of intrusion. This is some intelligent and thought-provoking dialogue. I am amazed and shocked. You hear these plinket dudes, you never expect to hear this shit. The build-up and tension here is excellent. The cinematography, the sound using, and everything works together in unison to create tension during the scene where the bounty hunter attempts to kill Padme. She wants to investigate and catch the intruder, so he wants to use herself as bait. This is some interesting and intelligent storytelling, Lucas. This is some good shit. That's what makes this movie so fascinating for me to watch. Obi-Wan's got an ego. That's badass. Your senses are not attuned to my own, young apprentice. Very cool. Personality flaws used well. Anakin's response is so good. That's good. And yours are? Again, all this intelligent dialogue. People talking shit. Don't even see this shit. What is wrong with you people? The special effects, the build-up, the cinematography, then boom. Man, the CGI is dead real, unlike most films where it's dead fake. In the heat of the action, Obi-Wan does something reckless. This makes sense, as he was young at one point, so he's getting on Anakin, but he's not perfect either. That builds character. It's actually really good. I've heard people talk shit about this, and this is my response. They can shut up. It builds character. Obi-Wan is not perfect, and that hypocritical, and that's hypocritical, coming from the same ones who claim he's emotionless. He shows emotion. And it's still an issue. It builds character. This scene is one of the best scenes in the entire movie. The speeder scene. Man, this scene is such incredible buildup. Great tension. And the chemistry between Obi-Wan and Anakin is priceless. The dialogue is so on point. What took you so long? Oh yeah, you know, Master, I couldn't find a speeder I really like. In the heat of the situation, they quip at the best times that fit so well. This gets me so deep. Idiots complain about the consistency in clones, but they explain everything here in Kamino. Clones are meant to be compliant. They expose this here, so it makes sense they commit Order 66. That's how their DNA is programmed. And the clones are here, and Obi-Wan is shocked. He meets Django, and it has so much tension and great use of intense cinematography to create a feeling of anxiety without shaky can. Excellent, George Lucas. You know how hard that is to do? Man, techniques out there. People use George. Use unconventional methods. Moments like this let me know George is from the cubic era. Much like his film THX 1138. I just realized that boss's number for Republic Commando. That was on purpose. So awesome. Now for Padme and Anakin. This gets on my nerves. First off, I hate sand for real. That's a realistic thing. It gets all in my feet, cuts it up, and hurts. Fuck sand. Plus, Anakin is just expressing his emotions to her. That's Shakespearean and Romanian. That's new for Star Wars. Never before has this been done in that style and flair of the Shakespearean. That's interesting. That's why they talk like this. They are in a galaxy millions of light years away. They are not going to talk like people on Earth. Plus, Anakin is a warrior monk. Trained to contain his emotions so when they continue out, it might not come out perfect. Padme is a senator who never got too involved with someone, so she is also not perfect. Wearing that revealing ass dress while saying we can't. Oh, now it's getting intense. Obi-Wan versus Django. It's the way he fights without his lightsaber that makes it so excellent. I think he uses Terracassi. Amazing use of fighting and improvisation. The choreography is so good, too, because it feels real. Anakin's got to go back to find his mom. When he does, he learns that she was taken and enslaved for four months. There's so much great buildup. Tension, dialogue, time, effort, and even patience building up to this moment. It's haunting, shot gorgeously, emotionally penetrative, and finally he kills them. And then he gets deeply emotional about the loss of his mom. Do you know how she died? In his arms, calling him handsome, couldn't even muster up, I love you. No wonder he became Vader. Cal Dooku is sly, a lot like Qui-Gon Jinn. They have similar personality traits, well, 
Count Dooku was his master. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I'm seeing this personality here, where it is absent in Tales of the Jedi Filoni Edition. Also, this personality, and yet people claim he's boring. No, because boring is some random dude forcing his personality every five seconds, like in the MCU, or especially in the new trilogy. Then, there's a fun droid refinery scene that every Star Wars film has, so before you call it pointless, you better look at Empire Strikes Back, it had it even there too. Oh, yes, Gladiator scene, cause Lucas got inspired by the movie, so good. And Blade Runner, yes, great inspiration Lucas, you got it. This scene is so entertaining, so engaging, great development of the characters there too. They mustered all this in one. It's so amazing! And Anakin and Padme admit their love to each other. Aww, their relationship was cute! Oh, come on! That dialogue is so good! What about Padme? She seems to be on top of things. Oh, come on, that dialogue is so good! George, you are on point! God damn, he was going through a divorce when he made this. And it shows, in all the right ways! Django Fett dies! Obi-Wan, Count Dooku, and Yoda fight! They get married, the end! So, what did I think? This movie is a masterpiece. And it's the most underrated Star Wars movie of all time. So many things click together in unison to tell one of the most cohesively sound Star Wars stories ever told. And it's the most underrated Star Wars movie of all time. So many things click together in unison to tell one of the most cohesively sound Star Wars stories ever told. This movie is brilliant. Tarragon is laying it down. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can. And if you'd like to comment, why not? And Tarragon is now out this piece. I love you all. Peace. Uh, peace. I, I love y'all. Big time. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I am now, once again, out this piece.